What's up guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow, coming at you guys with another fishing video. As you can see, I got offshore spinning setups right behind me, an electric rod and reel combo, and we're on a bay boat. So if I'd have to say so myself, today is definitely going to be an interesting video. You guys want to stay tuned. Some really cool stuff going on today. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in the Florida Keys. We're catching some bait because we're about to do some offshore fishing today. Conditions look good. Fishing's been good. So hopefully we can get on them today. So if you guys notice right here, I actually have my trolling motor remote underneath my shirt. And the reason why I do that is because when I'm ready to throw, I can just drop the remote, put my shirt over it. So that way all the strings right here on the net don't get caught. I've had it happen multiple times. So right before you throw, just drop the remote, put your shirt over it. Never have to worry about it getting snagged. Oh dude, it's loaded. Straight up loaded. Oh baby, the heavy net's a full net. <laughs> we got him. Nothing makes me happier than a live well full of bait. So if we don't catch something today, there's something wrong. But we're going to head offshore here and just see what we can find, see what we can get into. We're just going to look for debris, signs of life, and hopefully pulling on a fish here pretty soon. Let's go, baby. Let's do it. So, we just made it to the Isla Mirada hump here. I don't know. The Isla Mirada hump is basically a big underwater mountain. So all around the hump is about 500 feet and then all of a sudden it'll come up to 290. So the reason why we fish the hump is just because the Gulf Stream current rushes over the top of the mountain and basically pushes all the bait, all this stuff straight up to the surface. And um, therefore, this is a really good spot to fish for tuna, dolphin, sometimes even sailfish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on one of our baits here. We're using a really tiny hook, a 40 pound leader. And as you can see, we got our one bait out there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw all these out as live chum baits. And um, the reason why we throw out the live chum baits is just to kind of make our free line bait here a little more attractive to whatever may want to bite. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to let this keep on going out almost like we're yellow tailing and um, we're just going to wait for that bite see what we can get the key is is just keep on feeding line because the more line you feed um, the more natural that bait's going to swim and that's the key just want to make it look as natural as possible that bait swimming with all those other little free baits we're just trying to make him look like he's a part of the group but little do the fish know he has a hook in him you can see right there we're on so we're just gonna close that up it's down deep so it feels like a tuna see if we can get into the boat come on so I know the blackfin tuna down here it doesn't really look like a prize because you see people catching blue fin you see them catching you know big yellow fins but for us down here in the Keys this is a prize it's a sushi grade fish, so you can eat it raw, you can eat it seared, and I gotta tell you, it'll taste just as good as a blue fin, yellow fin, whatever kind of tuna. But that's what I love about it right there. I love how they pull that drag. Probably one of the hardest fighting fish, pound for pound, that we have down here in the Keys. And there we go, baby, come on. He's coming up. And look at this right now. We are the smallest boat out here. I get people coming by all the time, scratching their heads. They're like, how is this little boat doing this? Here we go, first fish of the day. Little blackfin. <sighs> the 
There we go, baby, just like that. That's what I'm talking about. First fish of the day. Let's see if we can get a couple more. Felt a bite. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> so that's the thing with saltwater fish guys like dolphin and tuna. These fish, they swim so fast. As soon as you put tension on that line, you start reeling, they'll set that hook for you. You don't need to jerk. You don't need to do any of that. You just got to make sure that you have really, really sharp hooks. You have good connections. Always check your leaders. Make sure nothing's ever frayed. And if you have all your ducks in a row, everything is perfect to a T perfect lively baits. There's no reason why you can't come out here and catch fish. But that's the beauty of the Florida Keys. I mean, you can come down here, you can go to the restaurants, you can go to the sandbar. You don't have to just fish. I mean, a lot of the times we'll just fish in the morning, hit the sandbar in the afternoon, go to eat at night or cook our catch. That's as good as it gets right there. Woo! Oh, oh, he's not happening. He ain't happening. Oh, yeah. dude. Look at that, baby. Nice, fat, black fin tuna. Got the morning light lighting them up real nice. You can see all those colors, real beautiful. Like I said, these make great sushi. And he's not happy. <laughs> so we're gonna bleed them real quick. A lot of people like to stick a knife right there. But what I do is I just stick my finger through here and I just pull up on his artery. He'll bleed out real nice, just like that. Look at that, just spit right out of his artery right there. Look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> Tell you what, the fish are hungry today, baby. All right, bait number two is back there, live chilling up again. What we got? It's almost like coming to the surface. Dude, it's a dolphin, dolphin. <laughs> That's sick, bro. Look, 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 a whole school of them, whole school of them. Let's get another one on. Let's get another bait on. Nice, nice. All right, got another bait on. Put that one in the rod holder there, let it get eaten. All right, I got a dolphin on each rod here. <laughs> insane, dude, that is insane. Let's get this one in the boat right here. Check this out, this is a nice dolphin too, man. Ready, it's coming in the boat. Coming in the boat, baby. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right. That's why it's so important, guys, to have a lot of rods rigged whenever you come out here offshore, because what ends up happening is, is you'll run into these schools of fish, and once you hook one, if they eat that bait real deep, and they get hooked, and they're lodged in the throat, you won't be able to get that hook out. He's a little small. We're gonna de-hook him. So like I said, having a lot of rods rigged, a lot of rods ready is the key to catching a lot of fish out here. And what do you know? The dolphin are eating just as good as the tuna on the hump today. This rod's on? Oh, total madness. Insane. I got one fish on, got another one on over there. This is a nicer one too right here. Check this out. That's a bowl right there. That's where it's at right there, baby. So these right here are what they call mahi-mahi, also known as uh, dolphin, dorado. So when you hear people say dolphin fishing, they're not talking about the porpoise dolphin, they're talking about these. But right here, you can see the difference between a male and a female. This is a female because it has a nice round head right here, and then the males have a really square head. So this is what you call a bull dolphin, and this is a cow dolphin. But let's get some more rods in the water, see if we can catch some more fish. 
So the hump was on fire today. I mean, we started fishing at 8.30, just got done, it's 9.30 right now. So literally all of that happened within an hour. But you know, around the 9.30, 10 o'clock mark, things really start to shut down. So we're gonna make a little move, try something a little different, hopefully get on some more fish. So let's go. isn't something you see too often. An electric reel on a bay boat. See what we can catch. So we're getting the rig ready right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a whole squid on the bottom, then I'm gonna do a chunk bait right above that, and then another whole squid right next to the light here, which is right at the top, and then another chunk right underneath that. So, let me show you guys our rig here. Four hooks, we got some glow in the dark beads there, we got a light right there because we're in what? I think we're in about 400 feet. So down there, it's just pitch black. And we got that five pound weight, which is insane. If I can get it out of the rod holder. Look at that, that is massive. So, we're gonna go ahead and drop that down. Start our drift. Send it down on its way. So as you see, I got my thumb here. That's just to make sure that that spool doesn't go too fast because if it starts going too fast, it may do what's called a backlash. And basically when you get a backlash, this will just turn into a bird's nest. So. You want to make sure to just let that down real nice and slow. And as you can see, it just hit the bottom there. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock it up. And um, the way that you know that you hit the bottom is basically, you can see there's a little bit of bend in that rod. Or actually, hold on. Oh. What's going on there? Oh, we got a bite. Got a bite. I got to tell you, this is really tiring. <laughs> And we got a whole lot of nothing. There we go, baby. One thing I did notice though is that top bait is gone. Oh, this is hard, man. This is tough. I don't know if I can do this all day. Oh, my butt's getting a little sore. I'm sitting down. All right, guys, so I'm pretty positive we just got a bite. As you can see, that rod tip, it's not really doing a natural movement. It's going to take time coming out here to actually come out here and understand um, what a bite actually looks like. As you can see, we're at the end of the line. Oh yeah, baby. Snowy grouper, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, that is insane. Dolphin, tuna, snowy grouper. I don't know what else to catch at this point. That is insane. Look at that. That fish came from 400 feet down on the bottom. And obviously they call him the snowy grouper because you see all those little white polka dots on them. But wow, what a beautiful fish and it tastes even better. So he's going in the box, he's going on the dinner table. He's going wherever I want him to go because I caught him baby, let's go. All right guys, so we're running over one of my lobster spots right now, so this crystal clear blue water has me itching to get in. So we're gonna hop in real quick, see what we can find. All right, dive her down, see what we can get. Exactly what we're after. But I gotta tell you, there is a massive butt down there. Whoa. You're about to see a live lobster <laughs> make friends with a bunch of pilchards. How about that right there? A 
nice one right there, baby. I knew looking down at him, he was legal. He's just so big compared to the rest of them. Look at that, baby. Number two. One for me, one for Stephanie. Now I'm gonna let Nick get in the water, see if he wants to catch one, but that's completely up to him. But one thing I know for sure is we are gonna be eating good tonight. Well, another amazing day down here in the Keys. I mean, we got it all. We got lobster, we got grouper, tuna, dolphin. I mean, what more could you ask for? But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up the mahi, the lobster, show you guys how to do that. Cause I have, you know, other videos cleaning all these other fish and we have a lot of cleaning to do. So I doubt you guys wanna sit through all of that. So let's get to work, baby. So we're gonna clean this lobster here first. It's super simple. All you're gonna do is just get a good grip on his tail, a good grip on his shell. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna twist and pull out. Try not to get that slime on the dock because it's super nasty, it won't come out. And um, we just consume the tails. We don't eat the heads, though there's a lot of meat in the heads. Um, if you really wish to eat them. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna break off this tentacle, toss that, break it one more time here. And then we're gonna use this to stick up as you know what, which is right there. And we're either gonna pull this out the back end or the top, depending on whichever way it wants to go. Because the last one was a little stubborn. So we're gonna go all the way up there, pull out. And as you can see, that is all of his nasty stuff. <laughs> you definitely don't wanna eat that. So that's it right there, super simple. Let's do a mahi now. As you can see, Nick just added to the plethora there. Just caught a mangrove snapper off the dock. So that's another fish to add that we've caught today, but we're gonna clean up this bull mahi right here. Mahi, they're actually super easy to clean, of course. If you have a nice sharp knife, that always makes things easiest, but we're just gonna go right along his back here, out through the tail, come around under his belly, Come around his shoulder, come down, flip him over, do the same exact thing on the other side. Come down. But now that we have a cut all the way around the body, we're just gonna run our knife down his backbone here. Start removing all that meat. As you can see, we're getting a nice, good fillet there. That's one side. Look at all those pilchards that he was eating right there. Remember we were live chumming this morning? He was going to town. Look at how many are in his stomach. Wow. That is insane, but gross at the same time. <laughs> all right, so now we're just going to go down this side. There we go. We are officially done with him. All that's left is the fillets. Let the nurse sharks go to town on him. So now we're gonna cut out his belly. I'm actually gonna use this as bait. Probably make some good deep drop bait, I would imagine. So we're gonna hang on to that. And then if you notice, all the way down the all the way, excuse me, all the way down this mahi, we have this red strip. We wanna cut that out. That's his bloodline. We get rid of that, it's gonna make the fish taste way better. Keep that as well for some bait. And then what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna lay this nice and flat. Rather than peeling the skin, we're just gonna cut it. So you wanna run that knife right along his skin, making sure not to go too deep, but at the same time, don't go too shallow to the point where we're missing meat. And look at that, that is just perfect. Do the same exact thing on this one. And that's it. That is how you clean a mahi-mahi and a lobster. 
We're gonna do the same exact thing to the other filet here, but just wanted to show you guys that real quick. And I gotta tell you, I hope Stephanie's ready to cook because we got a lot of fish. Welcome to our home. Tonight, it's filled with not just love, it's filled with pumpkins. Welcome to fall, honey. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to do the same recipe, but with a different fish. We're gonna do a fish piccata, and it's gonna be gluten-free. We're not gonna use the flour, so it's a healthier choice. What and video did we do fish piccata in already? We already did it with uh, hogfish. Oh, so if you yeah. guys wanna see that with some hogfish, go look at our hogfish video. That's right, tonight we're doing it with mahi, and it's a quick, easy recipe. So if you just got out of work like I did and you gotta get going with dinner, this is something that takes about 25 minutes to do and then you're ready to eat. So let's get cooking. Let's do it. All right guys, so all I'm doing is seasoning my fish with some salt and pepper, simple as can be. Then I'm gonna move my fish over to the stovetop. I'm gonna cook it for a few minutes, then take it off the heat and then make my piccata sauce and then mix it all together and then I have my fish piccata. All right, so we just finished our fish. Now we just gotta make that piccata sauce. So we added our shallots and I'm just gonna cook them for about two minutes till they soften. Then I'm gonna add my lemon, white wine, some more butter and then capers and then we've got our piccata. It's just so easy and it's something you can do within the hour. It's simple, it's quick, not a lot of ingredients. You don't have to go to the store and buy a bunch of things like our other recipes call for with all the salsa. So, you know, it's just something you can do that's very suitable for any lifestyle and it's delicious. So there we have it, the finished product. Well, we finally made it here to the end. And as always, Stephanie is always getting a head start. And I don't blame her, <laughs> honestly, because I'm starving. But thank God this girl can cook. Thank God I can catch a fish. But let's not forget, she does know how to catch fish at the same time. Mm -hmm. before, before she corrects me on it, I'm just gonna go ahead and say so. Mm -hmm. But in the next video, hopefully we'll get her out there fishing with us but I can see you've um, already done the honors. How is it? Oh yeah, it's delicious. And like I said already, it's a simple, easy meal that you can whip up together, no matter what lifestyle you live, if you're on the go, um, or if you just came back from fishing and you wanna whip something up real quick because you're hungry, it was the perfect recipe to follow. And you can do this with other types of fish. It doesn't need to be mahi, so. Yeah, quick and easy, thank yeah. God. Make sure you guys check out Avail Gear. A lot of stuff coming out before Christmas, which I am so excited about. It's been a lot of hard work these past couple months, but I'm finally getting to where I wanna be with the clothing company. And um, I'm excited you guys are here. I'm excited for you guys to see. But as always, we'll be coming out with a video on a weekly basis, and I'll let you go ahead and say your famous ending. <laughs> <laughs> so if you liked our video, subscribe and drop a comment. Let us know what you think and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks so much, guys.